This meeting is being recorded to the cloud. It will soon be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel by our wonderful IT department. And at this time, I will turn the meeting over to the chair, Christine Gray Mullen. Hello, welcome all. It's Tuesday, August 30th, 4 p.m. This is the Jones Library Design Subcommittee. And I'm going to open the meeting and call it to order uh, by checking if you could give a shout out if you're here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, George? Here. Um, Austin? I don't think he's, he's not here. Hopefully he'll be coming. And Sharon? Here. Great. And we're also joined, um, oh, I see just, okay, uh, by our OPM, Craig DiCarlo. And we have two members of FAA. We have um, Ellen Anceloni and Josephine Penta. Can, and I know. And also I, I got with me uh, Will Fernandez, also from college. Oh, and thank you. You know, okay. Will, I'm sorry, hey. I always <laughs> forget you. And Will Fernandez, welcome all. Thanks, Craig. <laughs> um, and you're the consistent one, Will. You know, we had <laughs> Ken, no Craig. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to jump to item two. We have minutes from July 15th. Thank you, Angela, for doing those. They're short and sweet. Um, so I hope everyone read them. I need uh, someone want to get us to approve them. So moved. And second that move. Second. Great. Okay, so I'll just roll call for, well, are there any changes or suggestions? Okay, great. Okay, so George. Yes. Sharon. Yes. And myself. So there's three. Thank you, Angela. And uh, thank you for posting those onto our website. So we'll move to item three, which is called schematic design updates, which is sort of what we're doing. It's all, all yeah. So do you want me to just turn it over to you, Craig? And That would be great. Okay. All right, so I'll share my screen. Thank you. All right. So not to hammer on something that we're all very well familiar with, but I just want to quickly, you know, show us uh, where we are. So, you know, we are at the end of schematic design. We're now, I have not moved this red line over the red line is where we are today. It should really be a week later, um, August 30th, just at the end of August. And we can see that there is a little bit of a schedule delay. So that's where we are as of today. Um, so what we're, the reason why I showed this is because what we're hoping to do is uh, really put the, um, our foot on the accelerated pedal and sort of get to the end of, the real end of schematic design so the design team can move on to design development. And to do that, one of the things that we need to do, um, or I would like to propose that this group do is look, take another look at our value management or value engineering cost cutting list um, even though these are items that almost everyone is familiar with, I'd like to go sort of top down, review each one. We have, uh, I've made a, a slight adjustment. It's mostly a, a verbiage thing, but um, whereas before it was rejected, accepted, uh, or rejected and possible, it's now um, we've kind of ranked everything as plausible or not plausible. And I'd like to get everyone on, on yeah, I'd like to get the committee's reaction and hopefully move some of them, if not all of the plausible ones into the accepted column. And again, this is just, my understanding is your recommendation to the LBC. Um, then at the next LBC meeting, they can make it official. But my hope is that today we can do some of that, um, you know, whatever legwork that remains to be done, we can do that today. Um, if there are any in sort of that not plausible category that, um, that the committee would like the design team to look at what we could have the design team do is um, for the next for the LBC meeting um, advise on how much design time and how much design fee it might take to sort of delve deeper into them either to really get a feel for um, how realistic they are maybe cost estimate 
you know, figures, um, that type of thing. So does that make sense to everybody? I, um, yeah, I like that because it was confusing before. Um, I don't see any hands from the others. Uh, I'm just going to say George and Sharon, like just speak up. Um, oh, and Austin's joining us. Great. Um, I'll give him a second to acknowledge himself. Oh. I'm here. Hello. Welcome, Austin. And you are, I can hear you. So uh, did you hear what Craig was saying or should he summarize what we're, our next process is? Keep going. Don't look back. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's perfect. But did you hear how he described the? We're looking at this. The um, I heard value management and what plausible, not plausible, and accepted. I and heard. What, I heard. Great. Okay. So, um, Craig, I think if you just and thank you, um, Ellen and Josephine, for being here to to help mm -hmm. give us answers and understanding as we go through these items. So just to, our goal is we're looking to try to get accepted uh, value management items that we will recommend to the, um, the Jones Library Building Committee to act on. So we're just sort of trying to flesh this out and hear um, why they're plausible or not plausible. And is and we just look at them as individual things. We're not like, like, are we supposed to have the budget in our head? Like we're trying to cut the most we can, or are we just looking at these things as individual items and try to base it on that? Does that make so sense? I, yeah. That's a, that's a very good question. I think uh, since we have such a large budget gap, uh, I think the name of the game is to reduce as much as possible. Um, so it's, it's, it's to the extent that the design subcommittee is comfortable, we would like to move as many of them into um, the plot, into the sort of recommended or accepted category. Um, but you know, part of today would be if there are any remaining questions or clarification needed, then we've got a couple days to do some homework and, and um, come back to you um, at the, the LBC meeting. Um, so as we go item by item, uh, can we just have all, since there's only four of us in this committee, just ask questions or do you want to like finish the item and then um, have us raise our hands? What would you we, we, Since there are many that are somewhat interrelated, we can certainly, this can be more of a free flow discussion. Um, and then if uh, we're getting too far off track, I'll, I'll just let you know and then or you say, you know, like, hey, well, we'll cover that in a moment. Um, so if that, if that works for you, that works for me. I think that sounds good. So Sharon, uh, George, and Austin, feel free to chirp in. Okay, so we're starting with uh, item one. Yes. And so um, some of, as I was mentioning, some of these are interrelated. So one and two are connected. They're um, two shades of the same concept, which is uh, right now the base estimate or the reconciled estimates include CLT. Um, to swap that out for steel, as we've discussed, would reduce the cost somewhat. Um, we currently have, and so it's broken up into the floor as being sort of one plate, you know, one area that we could switch over to steel, and then the roof being sort of a second area. So two kind of big chunks of the building. Um, and so what, if you accept both of them, then that would be, you know, the full building is structural steel. Um, we have them currently listed as not plausible. The values are 250,000 and 200,000 for those two um, portions of the building. Um, that is, those are, as all of these are blended numbers. Those are the reconciled numbers, which is an average between the two cost estimators. Um, is there any desire to recommend this to LBC for further consideration or um, leave this in the not plausible category, something that we are not pursuing at this time. And actually, um, I don't want to speak for the design team, but I think they've made it clear that this is a decision that um, 
moving into de design development, uh, we would not be looking back. We would stick with whatever is decided right. now. Yes, please leave is not plausible. Yeah, me too. Good. So I want to, if I may, Christine. Oh, please. I, I want to, um, I think we were asked to do something by the full committee, which I think we ought to do, which is to, to this is not plausible for what reason? And the what the what reason needs to be articulated? It's not plausible because. So I think that's what we have to say. Um, it's certainly plausible from a building and design point mm -hmm. of view, right? It's not like uh, yes. if you move from cross laminated timber to steel, you're not going to be able to support the roof or something. So I take it that it's not plausible, not for reasons of like optimal design, but because uh, we believe, whoever the we is, that using cross laminated timber will have significant benefits to uh, the sustainability, right? Will, it'll be less of an impact uh, when we build the building. So we, we need to just remind ourselves of these things because we wanna be able to say to the full committee that we looked at each one of these things. And what Christine asked, I think is it's, um, do each of the, do any of these cuts go to the integrity of the proposed lot, you know, proposed expansion and addition? Um, what is the the trade off of the, you know, change against the budget savings? And I, I'll just say one more sentence. I take it that the not plausible that Sharon. Well, I won't speak for them. Sharon and George, you said not plausible. Why don't okay. you artic articulate why you think this is not a plausible cut? Uh, so I guess I too don't don't like the plausible word, but um, I don't recommend <laughs> cutting those two items at this time because they are key to our sustainability efforts. The community, uh, it's it's um, it, it's a key reason why, one of the key reasons why the town voted for this project. So at this time, I propose we keep those two items. And I echo everything that Sharon just said. So I just want to clarify with Ellen, mm -hmm. this is like a moment of decision. But yes, moment, but this this decision, because there is no going back later. Correct. It's sort of like, ah, it could be a damn shame, like if we cut it and then miraculously we end up with extra millions of dollars and we're like, oh, but on the other hand, if we don't cut it and things get rougher, that's half a million dollars and we can't change it. Right. That's correct. Like, if we do, if we do change it, though, Christine, uh, Josephine reminded me this morning is that if we change this back to steel, we have to, we have to do, what do we have to run the energy model, Josephine, or the carbon, the tally again? Yeah, we'll probably have to run both um, the energy model for sure. It's a carbon footprint um, yeah. analysis, you know, that we'd have to recheck. Um, and so, I mean, we're going to do that again as we move forward, but um, I would imagine that you'd want, if we pulled it up from the project, I would imagine that everybody would, would want to see what the new numbers are um, moving forward before we even progressed to DPP, I would imagine. Does this change the look inside of the building? Just trying to, you know, we're talking about sustainability is so important, but I just want to find out if it's not plausible because what else changes? Does the look and feel of the building change? It, it will. Um, yeah. It depends how much CLT we expose, but um, there definitely will be exposed um, additional wood. Um, for instance, the columns, as we showed in the renderings, are wood at the moment. Um, and um, and that for certain would change. Um, we would have some exposed <clears throat> structure at the ceiling um, and that would all have to be in ACT. 
or some ceiling of the sort to cover to. Could we pull up a rendering? So what what you would so if you use CLT and not do any ceilings, you're going to have exposed ductwork, exposed piping, wiring, all that is exposed, which is fine if there if you if that's the your end result you want. <clears throat> you know, in some I would assume in some locations you're going to want some kind of ceiling to hide the actual mechanical unit. I know we're jumping ahead and I don't want to get in the weeds. Craig helped control me on this, but later on we talk about wood ceiling and acoustical ceiling. And does that play into this too? So as someone's talking about this rendering, please consider that too and mention like what is wood, what would be acoustical and where the HVAC conduit goes. So you can see my screen at this point, right, everybody? Mm -hmm. um, so this is an older rendering, of course. Um, and I know we had, you know, done some updates um, after this rendering was done, but um, where you're seeing the wood right now, um, to be honest with you, I think the ACT that Craig had mentioned um, in, you know, in the discussions last week, some of that some of these wood ceilings would have been changed out to ACT, but the idea would be that if we had a CLT structure that some of these ceilings wouldn't even be here. You would have, um, we don't show it exposed in these renderings, but you might have some exposed structure above. And so you would be seeing what typically is hidden in the in that structure, in between, you know, the, st the steel and the ceiling, you have a lot of um, piping and ducts and, and other items running, running across. And um, those are things that, you know, typically are hidden, but sometimes you, you will enter into some establishments and you'll actually see some of that stuff exposed. It's become a lot more popular these days. Um, but the idea is that some of these ceilings wouldn't exist um, with a CLT structure. So know, Ellen, the wooden ceiling roof is roof ceiling, not the CLT. Like in this picture, what is CLT? Can't see it. Correct. I in believe you can see we the, have ceiling. the columns, right? Yeah. So these columns would be steel if we remove the CLT from the equation. So I'm going to so, ask the silly columns here. Sorry, Austin, just what? So we have one that's a steel floor. And we have two that says steel roof. Which item one or two does the columns go in? Great question. <laughs> well, uh, no, this this the, I, the 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 all the columns are, are wood. Correct. Well, I think what Christine's asking is in the reduction of cost. Mm-hmm. Craig has it broken down to two elements. And so the question would be where it, where does the structure of the, or where do the columns go in that structural breakdown? Oh, he, I see. He, se he separated out um, the roof structure and the floor structure. Um, and I'm not sure if you can actually define that Craig at this point. Um, uh, right now, I'm opening up the RLB um, cost estimate to see if there is any further description in there. I ask only because we haven't brought it up, but if we were to, could we do one and not two or do two and not one? Yes, these, these would, uh, are sort of separate. You could do one, the other, or both, or neither. But if you only see the columns, that's why I'm wondering where. I would imagine that if you did the columns, you'd probably want that associated roof with it if you're going to expose it, because you'd want that whole space to feel um, connected, you know, like it's all the same structure. Um, May I follow up on a, something? So I'm just a little confused. So the rendering that I see does not show me exposed ductwork or wires. 
Correct. What what because that that wood ceiling you're seeing, Austin, is exactly that. It's a wood ceiling below the CLT system. So in this rendering, we're hiding yeah. that. Right. But are, are what was are, are we now saying that if we keep CLT, that's what I thought I heard said. If we keep CLT, we're going to see it. It's, all that stuff is going to be exposed. Yes. Well, I'm just I'm not understanding. I'm sorry, I'm just not understanding why keeping CLT now means all that stuff is exposed. Well, well if we, it doesn't have to be exposed, Austin. We can have CLT and um, use a wood ceiling or go to an ACT ceiling, acoustic tile right. ceiling. So right. that's an either or. Um, but once you do CLT, I think you want to think about not doing as many ceilings because you will then expose the CLT and that's I think why you want it right yeah I think to Ellen's point I think a lot of people like to expose it because um, they might be paying a little bit of premium but then they have the opportunity to expose it and show off that you know you have this um, you know carbon friendly building you introduce this um, you know, this timber into the building and, you know, you made a good move forward um, in the whole sustainability. Right. So I'm, I'm totally with you, except I'm looking over Ellen's head. So I'm looking okay. at, a, I'm right. looking at wood, a wood ceiling. I think it's, it's wood brick. ceiling. It's brick. Oh, okay. That, then I'm sorry. I thought it was wood. But it's the same idea, Austin, right? So it's the same idea. And Craig, can I share my screen? Uh, yes, Josephine's got control at the moment. Oh, oh okay. I have to let go first. Uh, hold on a second. The reason why I think we want to be very clear about good, that's fabulous. I think we want to be very clear about this is what we were asked to do by the committee. Mm -hmm. is to be very to dig into each one of these things and be very clear about why or why not we are recommending that the the committee in, endorse it so this is very helpful so this is what we would see if we yes had this is what you would see you would see this is i yep. couldn't find one that was finished yep. but this is yep. in construction yeah. there'll be there'll be you'll see, on the top level there may be roof drains um on the uh, there'll be more, there'll be lights hanging. So there's more stuff exposed, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. Um, but just, so I, I don't know if the, I'll, I'll unshare Josephine. I don't know if, um, I don't think, I don't think that's the, the question. I think the question for you guys is, do you want CLT? Now we can either, and if you say yes, then we can be strategic working with you on where we actually put in some kind of ceiling. But the first okay. The first question is, do you want it? Right. Well, part of my, I'm sorry, Christine. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, Christine. So part of the reason why I was inquiring, Ellen, is because I wanted to see what wanting it entailed fully. Okay. Uh, you know, I can want it, but if, if it's going to produce a look that is going to look like it's, you know, in 10 years, no one's going to want to look at it, then maybe I want it less. But on the basis of what you've shown me, I would just say for myself that uh, we should keep the CLT both for environmental reasons and also for design reasons. And um, what you've just shown me, though it's not, as you said, absolutely the thing, suggests to me that the design with CLT will be um, attractive and functional. Mm -hmm. How does that sound? Did that sound like architect talk? Attack, yes, attractive and pretty, pretty much. <laughs> Good. There you go. <laughs> And I just, it, it, but we can work with you on where, you know, getting the piping and all that stuff to a minimum on the really select areas that you want to uh, show off the, the CLT. I so, have a little bit of information on uh, the prior question, which was columns versus beams. Um, and it's sort of reading into the details of the RLB cost estimate, but they have separate line items for each of the components of the structure. So the columns is one line item. You can have wood columns, 
wood columns is what you've got right now. But in theory, those could be swapped out for structural steel. You've got uh, in that image that Ellen uh, just displayed, uh, you can see the beams. And in the image, of course, there are timber, mass timber. Um, there are a line items for that in the cost estimate. Then the deck itself, which in the photo Ellen had, it looked like a series of planks. Mm -hmm. So when you look up, you see mostly wood. Um, similar thing, cost estimate, base cost estimate includes that as being mass timber, but in theory, that's something that could be, you know, uh, steel and concrete or wood. Um, so I sort of going out on a limb, but I believe that you could, and again, this is also sort of a structural engineering question, but I believe you could have wood columns and then some of the components up above could be steel, say the deck, but the beams be wood, and then you'd fill in with ceiling in between. Um, so I, I think there are kind of levels of how much mass timber uh, you want to include. Then you, you start to whittle away at the savings. Right. I guess I was just trying to feel out, you know, it's $450,000. Is there a way we can spend 200 on that and then save 200,000, which is a significant line item. I think the rendering that you were showing before Josephine doesn't show exposed utilities or pipes or anything because it's encased in a wood ceiling. So what I was wondering is, was that rendering could be well, I was thinking, it, could it be the CLT or steel? But now I'm thinking that rendering is more that if it was steel behind that wood ceiling, because you've got the steel and all the pipes, and then you cover it with this nice wood ceiling. Is that what that rendering is? Correct. And to that point- You weren't thinking what, it was steel though, were you, Josephine? Well, this is pre- Sustain that these renderings were done. Oh, that's right, too. Right, 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 right. I'm going so back. We actually yeah. added the wood columns to this rendering, but it was originally done with um, with steel columns. Right. Um, but to to someone's point, I think, Ellen, it was yours. If we, you know, if you, you folks sort of picked areas, we could showcase the CLT, like maybe you only want it in the first floor because that's where everyone enters or whatnot and you want it in the main spine or you know somewhere in particular um where it's really going to show it off maybe the first floor has the wood columns and the wood structure that ellen was showing but then the second floor sort of goes back to the original rendering where it's just you know ceilings and it's just you know something to think about if and I, I, you're going I'm to wondering... hide it then it, it might not be as valuable to you um, as for, you know, that cost. But I wonder, I, I, I worry when we start mixing and matching, we're going to lose the savings. And, I, and you know, if, if you go in, you know, we put this project out to bid and it's all steel and, and concrete or all CLT, you're going to get a better price. If you start mingling these up together, you're not going to get the bang for your buck. I don't know what you think, Craig and Josephine. And I, I think there's truth to that for sure. Yeah. So I, I, I don't want to leap ahead, but on 11 or 12, we have ACT replacing these wood ceilings. So if we go back to this rendering that we were looking at, and that's somewhere between 300 dollars and $350,000. If I'm in that border, like if something's got to get cut, are we going with the beams or are we gonna look at the, the aesthetics? So, to, or are we trying to have it all? Uh, so <laughs> we're trying to have it all. <laughs> no, but we can't. So we're, we're, we're it's like we have a, a, a wallet and we're just trying to figure out what we can buy with what we have with our wallet. So when I look at that rendering and I think, is there a, you know, um, CLT or not, besides the beams, the, vertical beams that could be covered in wood if we're just talking aesthetics, I know. But if it went all steel, what was paining me is when I look at this rendering, the biggest shock, and we're not getting into the skylights yet, but the wood, if that went to um, ACT, that is a 
huge different look. Right, but with if this was CLT, Christine, we I could know. not put in a ceiling here and we could be very selective on where we do put ceilings, right? So, so I think that it's a, the savings that we would have if we just went to all ACT. I think if we, maybe, I don't know if this is correct. If we went to CLT and then reduced the amount of ACT, we're gonna be saving that piece. So you follow that, that Craig? <laughs> because that would be yeah. then a cut of a third of a million dollars potentially. The ACT. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm looking for something to cut here. I know we want everything, but mm -hmm. yeah, and I think we're gonna we're gonna need you're gonna want some drywall ceiling or some ACT at some locations, mm -hmm. right? We can just make those minimal. Like we see some of that on the the sawtooth right now on the south side. Would that be like drywall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just but, knowing other people know what we're talking about. So one quick question for you, Craig. Um, and it just went out of my head. I'm sorry. I just lost it. Well, it'll Ellen come back. about what that is. Craig, um, <laughs> I have a question too. Um, the ACT that you swapped out, um, was that a full swapping out? You put just ACT panels in that VE line item um, as a replacement to all of the ceiling types that we had? That was my um, question, actually. So, so I believe the, the compound wood ceiling is largely the ceiling of the second floor, basically what we're looking at here. The ceiling of the first floor, I believe, is mostly plank um, ceiling tiles. Plank tiles. Except probably the around the circ desk. Okay. Uh, um, I, we typically keep the finishes nice at the circ desk and around the major stair. Yep. So I, I, I think the idea is you would have zero compound wood to realize this $300,000 savings, you'd have zero um, compound wood ceiling. Everything would either be, uh, everything would just be a you know, drop ceiling, um, either long planks or two by two dials or some combination. And then for it, an additional savings is number 12, which would be, or I guess it's separate. You could, you could have the wood ceiling up on the second floor, you know, the ceiling of the second floor, first floor, instead of the planks, you could go, which are a nice, very sophisticated look. You could go to two by two ceiling tiles, which um, a little more of a typical um, ceiling. So those are two separate values, same, same as items one and two, you can kind of mix and match. But I'm under, I'm confused now. If we have CLT, like what Ellen was showing on her um, as built picture. Yep. We would just have more conduit exposed, but we wouldn't yes. necessarily have all this replaced with two by two. No. ACT. Correct. Correct. Yes, yeah. you could achieve even greater savings by going by um, having essentially no ceiling or very limited ceiling. But one, one thing I would like to put in perspective, and I think when we, we had a call with Craig earlier today, every month delay is how much money, Craig? It's uh, the um, escalation we're seeing is 1%, basically 1% a month. And so what so, is that? So if our, I guess it depends on which construction cost you use, but, um, so let's say if we're at that 38 million, 38.5 million. So we're losing in value, we're losing $385,000 each month. A month, so, right? Yes. Yeah, so if we spend a month and we save 385,000 in theory, yeah. we've actually saved nothing because right. the, the building cost has gone up. So if we spend right. an extra month and we save $2 million, we're still ahead of the game. If we, if, Worst case scenario is we'd spend a month and we save zero dollars. <laughs> now we've essentially lost three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars worth of value. So right now we're looking at what we can cut and you know what savings we can do on this building. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to make it sound like 
anything we cut is not going to save. Like, if you we have to make to the decisions. So, the, Ellen, if, if as an architect, you and Joseph yes. were trying to desperately save us money, we're a town that really wants a sustainable CTL. It is a pricely item. Let's show it off. I mean, if this is what the people mm -hmm. want and we're spending the money, yeah. then let's go into a library and see it. You know, when I'm looking at a rendering like this, you don't even see it. So how could you design a building that maximizes the look of the CLT? Yes, we are. On, we understand that there'd be more conduit. And, you know, we know we're in the like your office and yeah. restaurants. We, we know what it looks like. You, you paint it black or whatever. At, can we save money then through the uh, ceilings, that money there? And why is that going to make um, a delay so that we wouldn't actually make any savings? No, I no. my point of reference, Christine, was just to, sh to, to just, you know, because the longer we wait, the more money we lose. And I just, uh, we, uh, it seems to me that as an architect that will work, we've been working with you guys for a while, sustainability is huge in Amherst, huge. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, I don't live in Amherst, but I, I've heard how important it is. I would try to keep it. That's me personally. Because it's just so important to, to Amherst as a town. So we're, I think we're in a point of where we've reached kind of agreement on this, right? We've fleshed out why, which is both mm -hmm. for the sustainability and the design features. And what has helpfully been illuminated is there are other things that we can do in the building. Um, you know, ceilings here, ceilings there. But those decisions we can look at in a few minutes when we look at those pr proposals. Mm -hmm. So, Christine, are we good to go that we're not going to recommend and we have our reasons well, I'm, if I had to vote on this right now, I don't know how you feel, Austin, but I would like to table this decision and come back to it after we talk about the ceilings later on and the sure. skylights and that, because it's a lot about look and feel. And as Craig said, they're sort of all tied together a little bit. And I just feel we, we really need, need to make a due diligent effort here to try to cut something and still keep sustainability and and an attractive look. So, um, Craig, but just let, let's just let's just again the language counts, right? Which is what we have before us is a recommendation of a million and a half in cuts. So we've already got on the table. It's not like we're not going to cut things. We've got proposals to to cut things. The question is, do we want to add anything to that or remove anything from that? Right. And after I saw the numbers come in on the estimates. I feel we really have to look hard at it, mm -hmm. at everything, realistically. We None of us have a crystal ball, but times are tough. So Craig, do you want to go to three and four or should we stay with the skylights and the roof and keep, because I see a lot of them are then, if we skip around at the brick pavers, like exterior yeah. things, I, how do you want to do this? Let's uh, let's go through the list in order, even though it's, it's somewhat arbitrary, um, because then maybe it will give us a little time to reflect or um, not conflate the issues too much, but try to separate a little bit. All right. So um, three and four both have to do and five have to do with the exterior material. Um, number so. I don't know, and Josephine maybe can pull up a um, one of the exterior renderings um, for reference, but while she's preparing that, um, so we have right now, there are, I think, uh, three main materials on the exterior walls. We've got a brick for most of the building. We've got a, an Aris craft, which is a man-made material, silicate-based silicate material. Uh, looks like stone, but man-made. That's at the base of the building, so that first or the ground floor level. And then there are um, some areas of metal panel, um, specifically. I think are on the was it the north facade, the rear of the building towards the CVS parking garage. So these next three items have to do with uh, tinkering with those um, arrangements. 
So um, the first one would be um, Aris Craft in lieu of cast stone. Uh, so these actually must be at the window. Sorry. Actually, the best thing maybe, Josephine, if you could pull up, let me stop sharing this. We'll try to. Yeah, I'll pull up the renderings that we had, I think, at the last meeting. Craig, can you send that spreadsheet to Josephine and or Josephine send Craig the rendering just so we can have them both up on the screen at the same time? It would be less clunky going back and forth. I don't know which is easier. Um, I can I can very quickly share this with Josephine. Famous last words. I thought very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I've asked too much of my computer. That. It's spinning. Well, do you want to bring on the bring up the rendering, Josephine? Of the, yeah. I think it's the uh, the shot from the rear. Yeah. Is that the best put, one? At the last, I so. um, the last presentation where we had the exterior material options, um, we have. I can just. Oh, okay. That. Okay, so you're seeing the screen. Yes. So this All is right. the original, the brick over the slate base. And then you could just quickly walk us through those materials again. I think it, it's it's helpful so seeing them and, and talking about them. Sure, yeah. So the original um, design that we had, we had a, um, a gray brick, probably of um, a longer size, like a Norman brick. Um, that is um, at the top two floors of the building. And that's what you're seeing here and here. Um, and then our base was originally a slate sculpting, um, sort of built up like masonry, but um, we might have a better image. And that, um, cost, that was but too expensive. That was too much in, money. Right? right, so in the cost estimate, that material is Aeroscraft, I believe? Yes. 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 So it's, and, you, you know, a different, a little bit different of a look. Um, and then that that band between the, the two is that the cast stone this band here yep that's right yep and that and might then, be able to we, we could that could be just it doesn't necessarily have to be cast stone in the end we may have an option to Aristcraft have just a different color product we could use mm -hmm. from the base so so and that's then, super helpful all right, go ahead, Josephine, sorry. Oh, so, uh, just, I think I was going to add that these pop-outs that you see here were, I think we talked about this last week, were the metal panel um, portions. So anything you see basically um, that isn't brick or stone is is metal and glass uh, uh, remaining. So um, these pop-outs would be the same as the roof material, which is a standing seam. And then, um, and then the rest of it is glazing. And question, so the, the white frames around, say, the, the windows on the ground floor level and then the windows up on the third floor level, on, one, two, um, on the second floor level, so the highest level that we're looking at, those are, that's also a metal panel, I believe? Uh, no, it's either, it's, isn't it just the window frame, Josephine? Yeah, we're just showing it. Yeah, the window frame at the beefy. Moment. Okay. A heavy window frame. Mm-hmm. Got it. All right. And so then the metal panel is limited to that, um, the large area in that north Let's pop out corner. Here. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the elevator um, head house, you know. On and the on the um, sawtooth, right, Josephine? Yeah. Yeah. Like we've got the side panels here that would be metal as well. And that we could make that could maybe and we can work that on DD that could either be standing standing seam 
or flat seam, something a little less expensive, a little cheaper than the metal panel. Mm -hmm. All right, so then the, the three places where the cost estimators have offered up places where we can save money is that cast stone band between the ground floor and the second floor, uh, first floor, I'm sorry. That switching that to, as Ellen said, an Aris craft, maybe a different color, would save thirty could save thirty thousand dollars somewhere in that range. Um, the metal panel, um, say around that northeast corner, those those uh, windows into the fiction and nonfiction areas. Switching that over, you know, so changing the look uh, to uh, more of an Aris craft or um, an Aris craft material would save potentially a hundred one hundred ten thousand dollars. And number five is 50% Aris craft and 50% metal panel. Just at that white protruding area? I don't think you'd mix them. Yeah. Take a quick look at the drawings. But the, and maybe I just wasn't listening um, totally is, the, uh, there's an option to make the Aris craft base brick, correct? Yeah. Yes. Well, we had that as, as an option, right? Um, Is it yeah. on this list? Uh, I know we had the rendering. Yeah, that's that was the rendering. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Justine. Mm -hmm. And it could be a different color brick. It could be, it yeah. could look like Aris craft, it's just going to have more joints in it. That is not on this list. Maybe we get I, that number. Go yeah, ahead, I don't remember the difference on brick and Aris craft. I don't remember how far off they were. Um, it may not be that far, but I think it's worth double checking. Mm That'd be break and lieu of aircraft at ground floor. Yeah. We'd probably want to think about this pop out a bit. Um, I think, and I, I, yeah, now that we're thinking about it again, Craig, if it's aircraft, it's heavier than metal panel and it may need to beef up the structure. Okay. But maybe he figured that in this number. Possibly. Let's see here. I think we were trying to keep his metal because it's kind of an extension of the roof. So yes. I don't know if there's other materials we could sort of think about too that are lighter and might um, be cost effective. And when they did this estimate, it could have been at that moment, metal was pretty expensive because <laughs> we're seeing fluctuation of different materials depending on the week. Right, all of these estimates are kind of uh, taking a long guess yeah. at where things will be you know, a year from now. So may I ask an Aris Craft question? So I poked mm -hmm. around. I poked around on the website of Aris Craft, and it, it describes a lot of different things, at least on the website. So, is there some clear sense of what it is that we're referring to when we refer to Aris Craft? Because uh, from, That's from a good looking, question. On, looking on the website, there are, there are lots of different things. Craig? <laughs> oh, that would be a design question. Sorry. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> no, I think it's, I don't know what the estimator, when he said Aris craft, I don't Correct. know what he's saying that is. There we Aris go. Aris craft can be panels as well. But if yeah. it's just a brick shape, then it, it would look. There so it's go. more, it's more like that, Austin, than just yep. a standard brick. Yep. Yep. That's Correct. what it Correct. showed on the website as well. 
Gotcha. Good. Sorry. And my, my assumption would be that the estimator would not be adding a new material, rather saying, do more of this, do more of what's been described in the uh, specifications. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, Ellen and Josephine, if you had a little bit of time, I, we're trying to get ready for the next meeting on September 8th. Um, mm -hmm. Could you, with some thought, combine these three things and sort of come up with some design adjustments that would save money? I, I think we, I, I, you know what I would love to do is get direction from you guys of what you Correct. want. And if you need to see this rendering updated based on what we talked about here today, we can do that. Can we have it for next week? I don't know. Monday's a holiday, yeah. but not maybe not in China. That's where these are done. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I think, I think the idea of using the airs craft is that we would still stick with a darker stone and the yes. idea was that it would get as close of a look to the slate sculpings and that was the intent just to not change the look but save some money and that's where we ended with the airs craft so right. i don't think it it will actually be too different from this look here ellen you can jump in no i agree um, with you just mean strife but that, that stripe, we would get that stripe no matter what. If the stripe yep. was even a different color brick, if we did a soldier course in a different color brick, we're still gonna have that stripe. But for less money. And yes. you'll see around the, uh, on the left, framing the windows, is that something that would be changed out? And on the, you know, that, I mean, could what it be else is included in these items three, four, and five? We, I, I would love to get those both things on one screen. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, Aris Pratt in lieu of cast stone, Aris Pratt in lieu of metal panel, and 50% Aris Pratt slash metal panel. I don't know. So, I, that, go ahead. I, I don't know what some, the heck that is. That's right, a zebra. So I got some, some more, more clarity. Um, so when we, we took these ideas from the RLD list and put transfer them over to our list, we um, shortened some of them. Uh, the RLB list makes it a little more clear. And so um, Aeroscraft uh, brick in lieu of stone. So that one we've got a good handle on that horizontal line. Uh, the next one was Aeroscraft brick or stone in lieu of composite metal panels. So the idea is composite metal panels gone and you're redesigning so that it's, there's no composite metal panels, either aircraft or brick or stone. Um, and then the third one would be to switch out half of that, whatever that material ends up being with a low, lower end um, exterior material, such as a hardy board. No. So that- We wouldn't would be recommend hardy board. Well, if, if you want that look and the, that hardy board would have to be, it comes pre-finished and over time, it will be a maintenance thing. Not in five years, but I don't know how long their warranty goes for. It could be, I, I know we could look at that, but, I, but the, the question is, I, I don't, I don't know how to get, to get answers to this without us doing design work yep. and design work should be done yep. in design development yeah so here's the here's the if i may christine here's the problem you say hardy board and it doesn't parse for me <laughs> so uh you know hardy boys i know that you know hardy <laughs> meal oh, no. but hardy but I, I but this is the process question so i believe that we should substitute as is proposed, this Aeroscraft material. I see it, I know what it is. But when you say hardy board, I don't know what it means. So it's hard for me to say, well, let's do option three when I've got no idea what a hardy board is or what it looks right, like. Right, right, right. Now, I don't want you to spend a lot of time like doing design work <laughs> that, you know, is like, we're not gonna do that. So you would have wasted, wasted time. 
But I will say that in advance of the meeting, the next meeting, what Josephine did with Ariscraft, somebody's going to be able to do with Hardy Board. In other words, the meeting is going to be just a bollocks of people not knowing what it is that we're yeah. even talking about. You don't have to do design work to show me what Hardy Board looks like. Correct. So that's what I'm that's what I'm suggesting that whatever it is that we're talking about have an image of it so that people can say okay well it's not it's not designed into the building but at least we know what it is that we're talking about mm -hmm. so hardy board is a fake wood siding it's not vinyl siding it's not wood it's used it's, on houses all the time it's very nice stuff but yeah and it look and so when this says in item five, 50% Ariscraft slash metal panel, is that 50% of that lower area? Again, not building on what Austin says, like a picture of what Hardy Board is, is helpful. But if we look at that rendering, if you can even use your cursor and show us areas that could potentially be turned into Hardy Board. I'm gonna share my screen. So this is, this is the products that Hardy Board makes. They make this siding that you'll see a lot on buildings, they, which is a clapboard, right? And then you have to do trim boards. And they make this flat panel, which you see a lot in Boston. They're, every uh -huh. multifamily going up has this stuff on it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. And you can get vertical. So this is the variety of things they make. Great. It's, it, it, the only thing is, is, is eventually you're going to have to paint it, but it, it won't rot. So, Craig, I assume RLB was assuming we were going to do this hardy board. Right. For and 50%. not the clapboards. Yes. But that, yeah. that's like, that's such a bizarre thing to me. There's some, guy, there's some kind of saying about that. It's just, it's, it's wrong. You wouldn't mix the two. So if you pull up the rendering of our building, if you could just show what. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Maybe between the three of you, you can figure out what areas could potentially turn to that hardy soil. I, right. when, I, when I said first, no hardy, I was thinking the clapboard, but if we can get that smooth. And I'm on the same page as you, Ellen. I thought that's originally, that's what right. the, the listed item. Except if we're going to have to paint it every five years, I want no, no you part don't. of that. You don't oh, okay. have to, you don't. you don't. You will eventually have to paint it, but you'll no, probably no. retired. Amherst, <laughs> the mill district, that's all hardy board. That whole yeah, all the, you know, all the developers are using it because it's yeah. the cheapest thing you can get. Oh. I still don't want George out there painting it. Uh, it you probably get it's 10, hard, 15 years before you paint. It, it lasts a long time. Houses yeah. are doing it now, and that's the whole sell. You pay a high fee, but you don't have to paint your house for a long time. Yeah. But so... Which, what's your quest? What, what's the question? Do you so want us to? What areas of that rendering could possibly be this, this white area? protrusion? Right, so that you could do that. And that could be $150,000 savings. Definitely putting Craig on the spot here. <laughs> 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 I, I think the difference between the hardy board and the metal panel for that area perhaps is $150,000, but it doesn't have to be that area. I think, I think so a common concept um, in early stage value engineering is the concept of uh, design to a target. And so, you know, today or, or you know, this, this, this list, we can say something like, all right, change half of the area to from X to Y. And we don't need to necessarily know exactly where we're changing, but we just sort of, the design team keeps in mind, all right, if we have um, 5,000 square feet of material X, 2,500 of it by the, you know, by the end of design development, half of that 2,500 is gonna be material Y, the cheap stuff, but we can still keep some of X. So perhaps um, almost like when we were having that ceiling discussion, that areas where the, the public is, is seeing a lot of and, and touching um, and you know in close proximity to maybe that's where we put the nicer material the uh, what we currently have and then the 
in sort of hidden areas or areas that aren't as um, visible, we put in a lesser quality, uh, let's, a less expensive material. But, Does that make sense? Like, but the, the thing that I don't understand is this 50% Aris craft and metal panel. The right. primary places that we have metal panel is on the white projection and yep. on the sawtooths. So I think the sawtooths are, are fully encapsulated in item eight. So okay, when we were going terrific. Through, yeah, so that so that'd be that's like the glass, the, the structure, the cladding, the roofing. Basically, make those go away and put in a plain flat roof. Is sort of like one cost. One number. Okay. Yeah, that makes number. sense. Yeah. So, but the only so Josephine, you would know this better than anybody. The the other place that we have metal is on this white protrusion. Protrusion, and when we say fifty percent of this will be Aris craft and metal panel, that's like um, a donkey. Uh, again, it's not right. So, so I don't think they're I should a camel. Do, yeah, you don't have to do half and half. I think uh, the, the cost estimator was saying, add up all your area of Aris craft and metal panel and somehow okay. in, a, in a, an appealing way, reconfigure it so that half of it is hardy board. I mean, you Just could do all of it in hardy board, but I think he was trying yeah, to preserve so some of that. But I think my but, question, Craig, is just um, perhaps you would have to just go back and look at the numbers. But if yes. you were assuming 50-50, right now, I, the way I see it is that there's a lot more base material than there is material at the projection. Right. And, I, and the, the thing of it is the Aris craft and a metal panel are two distinctive mm -hmm. looks. Aris craft, as you saw, is more of a uh, ashlar stone and the metal panel is sleek and flat. So to, to, from an aesthetic point of view, architecturally, you wouldn't change that. Those wouldn't interchange. You might interchange as we talk the, the um, metal panel for hardy board, the panels, the, the big sheets. And then I'm also not sure, Craig, I think you might have noted it before, but did you include the elevator head house also in your numbers as far as metal panel to totals in your estimate? Right. So uh, speaking of areas that are somewhat hidden, you know, maybe that's an easy one to switch to a, a hardy board. Uh, yeah. Because I keep calling it a head house, but, you know, we have that whole corridor that. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, you know, skywalk, if you will, um, that goes yep. to the top mm -hmm. floor um, staff area. So that right. would all be lined with the same material. Right. So perhaps that area plus this uh, bump out on the first and second floor, the northeast corner. You know, if you add those areas up and you and um, you add up the ground floor base, maybe those are somewhat equal. And so you say, OK, well, we'll do hardy board for anything second and third floor, or I'm sorry, first and second floor, but the ground floor, because people are gonna be touching it, people are gonna be hanging out back there, we keep that as the air craft or vice versa. We say, okay, we wanna keep that nice, crisp, long lasting metal panel up there. But then we do, um, instead of air craft at the ground floor level, that's all hardy board. So that that's the type of concept. And again, I don't think the cost estimators are dictating it's gotta be one way or the other. I think they're just saying, as a concept, if you reduce, if you make some of the material less expensive, you can save 150,000. Mm -hmm. But target. I can see how this is totally confusing. I see Austin nodding his head. Yeah, it is. It is confusing. And so, I, think, I think we need better descriptions and we can work with you, Craig, and come up with something. It is, it is uh, again, everybody's grateful. There's been a lot of work going into this, but it's a little hard to, to follow all of this. Mm -hmm. And you guys are having a fabulous conversation, but <laughs> uh, I'm, and I'm sure it's, it's great, but um, you know, it's a little hard for the, I'm sure George is just thrilled at the idea of more things to maintain on the outside of that building. Uh, you know, more things to paint, more things to, to worry about. But 
I want to go back to where we started for a minute, and I want to get a view of that um, of the spreadsheet. Uh, and then I think we need to talk about the process. Um, so again, Craig, can you get rid of the rendering for just a second so we can see the whole spreadsheet? So uh, Josephine's got, I sent the uh, spreadsheet over to Josephine. So that's okay. the screen can, that we're looking at. Josephine, can you make that spreadsheet legible to the elderly eye? <laughs> um, yes. Zoom it a little bit or increase the thing because otherwise you're not going to be able to see it. Same. There's a slider just being in the lower right hand corner of your screen if you want to. Oh, right. There you go. All right. Is that good? So, well, it's good, good enough so that I can, you know, nag Christine. So, we're on items three, four, and five. Is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, I, I got a little lost with the, the Hardy board. Is that number five? Yes. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's very helpful. That's very helpful to see. So in the proposed changes, the plausibles, we are in fact showing the 50% Aeroscraft and 50% the Hardy board combo. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And the Hardy board you are now saying would probably be where the metal, the framing of the windows that mm -hmm. that kind of that kind of metal yes okay so that gives me a little, little image of what I, what it is i'm talking about and does hardy board come in a range of treatments such that it will work with whatever our aeroscraft treatment is you're asking the designers a, a hard question <laughs> i don't know what the i'm sorry austin i so here's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. A cost estimator says you can save money by doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm talking to architects, and I just want to make sure that I understand that the hardy board material that could be substituted for that metal panel could nicely combine with whatever kind of aeroscraft yes. thing that we, that's all I was just, I just needed a yep. yes. Okay. Yes, yep. Okay. So the difference with these conversations is a few months ago, when we were talking to our designers, that's what they do. They're architects, they're talented and they have a vision and they're trying to make an attractive building, but they're not obsessed with every little dollar and what, how they finish out the building. So here we are now at a budget that we need to really hard examine every material for what it costs and can we still have an attractive looking building which i think it will be but the designers have to sort of figure out how they're going to do their designing with a less expensive material because it does change things and this is a hard moment but we have to do this due diligence mm -hmm. i understand it's taking a long time maybe because i know where you're going with this austin you know maybe we're going to have to have two design subcommittee meetings before the next meeting or something. And the designers are going to go off and talk with Craig and dive deeper in this and come up with what the agreed savings maybe could be if materials are swapped out. These are needed conversations. Um, so so we've, have, had, we've, we've had, had 10 of those, Christine. Yeah, exactly. we've, we've had 10 of those. We've been talking about, we've been, Craig is our new best friend. We've been talking to Craig every day, essentially, going through these numbers. And I think this this piece is just confusing. And it's we have to just make it organize it better. So when we do meet with the big committee, there'll be no question. And that that's because we know what it, you know, it's right. we'll make it more clear. So you just shocked me a little saying that there was 10 previous meetings that, you know, we, no yeah. Austin's like, I don't get this. And and I'm saying why is there not agreement that we can move this item that we had under possible into accepted? Be, you know, Christine, well, may I just say, hold on one second. I'm sorry to sorry. interrupt someone from Boston, but, <laughs> um, but I think there is agreement. I, I think that's, we, we've got a proposal. The proposal came out of 
incredibly diligent mm -hmm. meetings between the architects, the OPM, the director of the library. We have a proposal. What we're asking for and what they're doing, though, you know, it's taken a little while, is just to clarify for us right. certain things. So this is the this is the we don't need another proposal. This is the proposal. No, no, no. We need to know when we cut an amount, yeah. what is it gonna look like? What are we getting? What are we gaining? What are we losing? I mean, obviously well, we're gaining money, but what are we losing? And that's and I, I get how this is hard because it's from estimators and, and the prices are constantly changing. So, you know, right now, if I was to ask the four of us, you know, should these line items three, four, and five move into accepted? We, you know, I can ask that. And if, if it is a go to go into accepted, well, the next phase is these designers have to really have this buffed out and be able to explain what it's going to look like what parts are going to be what on the renderings it's hard without updating renderings that's why ellen was saying she wouldn't know if they could have new renderings by next week. no i i don't think so um yeah. but just just to back up the what the plausible not plausible that's our recommendation right but i thought craig in the beginning of this meeting said that in this meeting, we're trying to move the plausibles into accepted so that that can go to the building committee. Correct. So I, we're I, saying it's, can I just finish Austin? Yeah. We're sure. saying it, it's plausible. We're asking you, is it acceptable to you? Yeah, and my answer is yes, it is acceptable. Yeah. That, um, would, be my, that would be my yep. answer. And I don't the think- board options. So, and, and, and I don't think that, uh, we're going to ask you to design the building so that we can tell you whether or not, like, we, lo we like Hardy Board. So I think that you've made a proposal. You've shown us Hardy Board. You've shown us Aeroscraft. I think um, uh, we ought to say, yeah, that's that's an accept that's an acceptable change, and we will of course want to, you know, see what it's going to look like uh, at some point. We're going to say, gee. You may, might want to move some here or some there. But I, I myself, I don't know about George or Sharon or Christine, I think it was very helpful to me to see the Aeroscraft again. It was very helpful for me to see the Hardy board. I, I think it's a plausible, it's a plausible change and I think we should accept it. I agree with Austin. I think we should I, move items three, four and five into the accepted column. Uh, basically because they are aesthetic issues and um, and we can make these cuts. Right. I, and just, I agree with I agree with both of you. I think we have enough information to make that choice. Yeah. That's and just great. just so when it, you come, make sure you bring pictures. That's all. Yes. That's, that's the expectation. And as Ellen was saying, there was a lot of discussion between our OPM and the designers because there is they have to figure some things out. So when they figure this out, and if you could have it defined and maybe mark up some old renderings or something, so because I think the building committee is going to want to see well, what they We expect. can't, Christine. We can't do the 50% Aeroscraft metal panel because that's designing. That's going to take, that's, a, that's what we have to do in the next phase. Yeah. I, think, I think what has to be done is we have to move forward. I know that it's going to take a little bit of time, we can show you like images of, of Aris craft and make sure people understand what it could look like. But yeah. for us to mark up on the building where we're changing it, I, I don't, we don't know when we're doing 50%. But we can, we can show I mean, you. I'm good to go with this. It's just what the building committee, if they're good to go with it, I just know with the outreach, you know, there's been a lot of what what we can do, Christine, is on items three and four, we could yeah. put a we can put a bubble around that on the renderings and say this is where it would change. Awesome. Great. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. But one thing, Christine, you said, and I don't think you meant it, is that we do care about all the costs. We do. We are very cost conscious. I didn't um, say we didn't care. That's not what I said. Okay. I said, all right. Originally designing. That is not your prime concern of what the materials cost. Like you're designing a building. You're it's the best you're like, we could do. And the look yes. and feel. And then you're like, okay. And then of course you propose. We had a different time period then. It was a yes. 30 
$3 million building and you were building it for that. And now it's different times. So yeah. this is a normal part of the process. This yes. is, this is could, normal. Could we, yeah, go, could, is. could we go to number so, six? So yes. yeah. Window sash replacement. Yes, so, so number six, um, the base cost estimate includes uh, the existing windows, um, in the exist in the renovation portion of the project, being replaced the sashes, um, for a savings of around one hundred seventy thousand, we would leave the existing sashes, you know, the movable parts of the window, in place, um, and that is another one that's sort of technically feasible. But great, I personally don't know what condition they're in. George does. Yeah. yeah, I do. And and that was the question I had the last time we looked over this was um, there would have to be a cost factored in as to renovating the existing sashes because uh, they are the originals and they've been painted a million times and many of them are in poor shape. They would at the very minimum need to be removed and, and, and renovated. So I'm just wondering how much of that savings will be lost. Mm -hmm by replacing them um and maybe that gets put into you know historic preservation funds or whatever but um i just don't see that as a total savings because you would have to do something with all of the original sashes and I, I think george to add on to that the question is what and i can't remember is there a storm window on the outside there are steel storms that were added probably in the 70s, okay. and they are also in, in mostly poor condition. Mm -hmm. And to realize this $170,000, it would basically leave the windows as they are, so, which sounds like it's not a desirable situation. I, 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 I'm strongly against leaving the masses. So may I just say, I was, I'm now just a little uncertain because I thought in the building committee it was said that if we don't replace them we would repair them and I thought the idea was that but again I may be wrong that this $150,000 contemplated some repair of the window sashes or did I did I mishear that in the building committee I heard it too I, think I just don't think that was determined at the time yeah That's right I think Sorry, Craig, go ahead. So I, uh, the, the exact wording from the cost estimators is leave existing windows to remain. So my interpretation is that, that, that no work would be done to those windows. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. So what we could do um, to George's point is get a number or you know, work up a number an allowance of what we would think it would cost to refurbish those windows and probably put new storms on the outside or on the inside and see where that number comes out to. Yeah, I think that'd be really helpful for that number. And how hard is that number to get? Can that be for the building committee? Um, I think that's something that cost estimators could um, come up with pretty quickly, but I suspect it would be a situation where, like George said, where that one hundred seventy thousand dollars will pretty quickly evaporate or you know be significantly reduced if you touch it. Yeah, if you start yeah. touching them. Mm -hmm. So not worth. Well, not worth. Like if you if it costs even a hundred thousand dollars to refurbish them all, is it worth saving seven? Could be. Well, the other thing, it, you know, is there another, another funding source for these? But I think we're probably using every funding source we can get. Hmm. So is it a big deal to ask the uh, estimator to do this? And we just, we could, as a committee, I propose just say, we want to accept this, but are waiting to hear what it would cost to refurbish them. And then the building committee can decide at that point. I suspect that the cost estimators can give us uh, prices 
in advance of our upcoming LBC meeting. Um, and we can plug them in here and as sort of a 6A or 6.1 to repair no. but not replace. When you when you guys made the recommendation, just to just to drill on this one, when you guys made the recommendation that we could save Mons money by not replacing the window sashes on a building that's um, you know, as George said, the window sashes are what they are. What were you contemplating for you know the life of those window sashes? I mean, what was the cost or was was there any thought given to uh, we just keep the window sashes there and deal with them as they break. Right. I, it, it, it was actually, this was an idea that was uh, that came from the cost estimators, uh, specifically RLB. We said, what can we do possibly to save money? Yeah. And well, a natural thing is, all right, you've got existing windows there. It's not like an opening. Um, just leave them. <laughs> you know, um, obviously for the new windows, we, you know, we don't have something existing that we can just leave. So yeah, that was just an, what, what he sort of thought of as a, a way to save some money. You're giving up some value, no doubt. Um, but you're yeah. giving up some value and you're, you're, we're yeah. spending a lot of money to have old windows that are gonna need repair. That's the, that, so that is Chris, true, Chris, yeah. Christine, I think probably the best thing to do with this one, right, is to, put a question mark, so to speak, right? A around it, pending whatever information that- The estimator to come back with what it would cost to Great. refurbish them. Yep, Great. that's what I propose. Are we, are the four of us? Yep. Okay. I know George was against this. Uh, are you okay with that for now, George, to move it forward? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, you know, I, I would like to hear what the cost estimators say. I'm skeptical that it, it's going to make a compelling argument to yep. take this out, but yep. I, I'd like to see an estimate anyways. Good. Yep. That should be easy enough. Good. Sharon, you good? Yep. Thank you. Okay. So we'll move that. So number seven. So the, yes, number seven. Um, so the existing slate roof is in need of repair. We, we, we've heard that. Um, instead of replacing it in kind with another new slate roof, replace it with a less expensive roofing system, which would be a standing seam metal roof. Um, we have this one listed as not plausible. Um, Feingold Alexander does not think that the Amherst uh, Historical yeah. Commission or the mm -hmm. Mass Historic Commission would accept yeah. it. Yeah. One thing I'm, I'm wondering if it's worth checking, Craig, and I'm just thinking that while we're sitting here, there is what we call synthetic slate, right? It's fake slate. Uh, and if we could get a number for that, and you know, when we do go in front of the historic commission, will they approve it? I don't know, it depends. I did wanna ask about that, thank you. Is that another estimator thing that they could get? Certainly. Um, given my experience going before the Historical Commission on three mm -hmm. occasions to have roof repairs done, they are very, very specific on okay. replacing exact in kind. So I honestly feel that that would be a non-starter with the local okay. Commission. Okay, you, you would know, George. Yeah, Ed I, I've had three separate JCPC projects with roof repairs and they literally even wanted to see samples of the shape of the slate mm -hmm. so i i just think it's a non-starter okay okay so we'll leave that one where it is okay great um next item is eight um so instead of our sawtooth skylights sawtooth roof monitors you could call them um removing those and instead having typical unitized skylights. Sounds like they've already paid that price. Actually, I'm <laughs> yes, sorry. Yes, you have. <laughs> MBLC Actually, reminds us that every time. Actually, sorry. So this would not include unitized skylights. This would just be removing the sawtooth. We have a little, you know, lost in translation between the cost estimators list and this list. 
This would just be removing the sawtooth skylights and having blank or flat roof. That's number eight. Yeah. So there is no skylight replacement. Blue. You're saying flat roof, which if we could pull up the rendering and if the designers could just talk about, you know, the rendering we're looking at is not what it would look like if we go with the CLT. <laughs> And which, are we talking about the, all of the, like there's the sawtooth, but then there's the skylight that runs down the middle and. That still exists. So that would still stay there. As far as I know, Craig, correct? It's only the sawtooth. I believe so. It just says okay. eliminate sawtooth at roof. And what does MBLC feel about the sawtooth skylights? They, they just don't want skylights. They, right, they just, they're like water leaking, okay. Right, because so, apparently they told the Jones Library back then not to do a skylight and they bring it up every time. So it would already be pushing the envelope because you got the middle one, leave that. Yeah. And then you got the sawtooth ones. I'm just saying, so if they did go away, would it look more like that CLT ceiling that you showed us earlier, Ellen? where yeah. it's a high ceiling with all the wood and you got a few conduits and lights running around. Mm -hmm. It would, it would be flat. It would have a different feel for sure. But um, I don't know what the floor to ceiling is here, Josephine. It's, it's probably 11 feet, 12 feet. Yeah, we have a good ceiling height. It wouldn't point. feel too low, but you would lose all of that sunlight. I know, and I'm only, playing devil's advocate with this because it's a half million dollar number. Yes. Number. So I want from the other three, um, what you think? Yeah, I don't think we can accept this at this point because of, for the same reason that we couldn't accept one and one and two, you know, it's, it's a part of our sustainability goals. Um, so I, I say we reject this. Yeah, I'm, I'm more with Sharon, especially for the sustainability aspect, because you're also eliminating the ability to have solar panels up there. Well, you could still do solar panels, George, but they'd be on their own raft. Right. They, yeah. they would look awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Different look. So the sustainability, because these face north, I mean, they give a little diffused light, but it's not a sustainable thing, except that they're going to hold up solar panels down the road. Well, it's also so, natural lighting and, yeah. and a lot of other things that contribute to their sustainability. Right. So it's not just the, the soft, fact that you're getting, yeah. It's bringing in a soft light, but then it also has the south facing panel or future panel location. So it's for possible future solar and it's a soft natural light instead of having some low cost LEDs. Just. Can yeah, you thought, I'm sorry, can you clarify? I, I thought we were definitely getting PVs up there. I, are they, I don't, I think we're PV ready, Josephine, aren't we? I think it's PV ready. Really? I mean, our intent, of course, was that they would have panels, but I just don't know where we are with that, Greg. Was that included? I, th I thought we've been clear about those being included like since day one, since the sustainability, uh, efforts were approved. I, we can double check that, Sharon, but if they are, we can, we should consider taking them off for now as a VE value management thing. And you could do them if they're PV ready, you can do them after. I mean, right. because to Christine's point, something's got to give and yep. we know what can't. Um, and it, it's just, it, we're all in a tough spot. All right, so uh, I'm look, I just checked the cost estimate and they uh, exclude, at least RLB excludes photovoltaics. So as Ellen was saying, the building would be photovoltaic ready, um, but, it would, but this $38 million does not actually include those solar panels. And we could go either way, Sharon. Sometimes we do have them as part of the project. Sometimes the client prefers to do that separately because they don't have the contractor overhead costs 
they, they go directly to whoever's doing the solar panels all over the place, that vendor. Thank you. So I think that um, one of the reasons why I think we should not accept this, this possibility is, again, for reasons of design. Um, I think that one of the things that's going to make this library quite extraordinary is the the kind of um, lighter feel of the inside of this building. And right from the beginning, I thought that was a, a kind of very interesting and important uh, feature of the design work, that this mm -hmm. is going to be a kind of light, it's going to be a, a building filled with kinds of light, natural light. And I like it and would like to... Um, like to preserve that that strikes me as an important part of the design of the of the of the building and what the feel of the building will be so I, I do think it looks beautiful but coming at this as a engineer and a library student I just finished a public libraries class and you don't want skylights over your stacks that's a fact I think the skylight down the middle is beautiful. If we are paying the money for the CLT to open it up and have this very green sustainable building, I again put my hopes in Josephine and Ellen to be able to maybe open up more windows on the side. Um, you know, we toured some libraries. We went in to both Woburn and um, Lake Medford, if you look at those, they did have a skylight in their um, lobby but there's no skylights in where the people actually live um, they just had windows and i found those spaces very lovely i think we're just looking it's really like this is what i'd want to live in but again something's got to give i'm just trying to play devil's advocate here because it's big dollar amount and we get to show off the clt it's how you sell it We can table this with the one and two. I mean, they're all tied together. I guess, Craig, I had a question. Um, you said that the skylight um, running along the spine, um, that wasn't eliminated. And I was thinking that it was originally, um, but that is a pretty large expansive skylight that we have there. So it would probably be good to just look at potentially, um, you know, what that, what that element is. I don't know if we keep it separate or not, but I thought that was part of the initial number. The aluminum frame custom skylight, base skylight system and sawtooth. So at least RLB has two line items, one being for the sawtooth, <sighs> one being for the what they're terming an aluminum framed custom skylight, which is that uh, the closest one to us in this rendering. Oh, that mm -hmm. is this one. Yeah, and so I believe based on the description that would remain, and it's just the sawtooth. Uh, there are seven of them, I believe, that get uh, would get removed. And that's actually possibly another idea is instead of seven, um, you know, reducing the quantity of sawtooth skylights. I think I'd be careful about that. What we can do is look at reducing this one down the spine, right? Does it have to go right. quite as long? I think if we maybe mm -hmm. reduced it by 30%, what would that savings be, you know? So, so that skylight that we're talking about is the, unfortunately, is the less expensive, lesser Yes. Spence. Um, RLB has the total cost somewhere around $50,000 for that okay. skylight itself. I, I know there's structure and drywall and paint and stuff that's associated mm -hmm. with it um, versus the sawtooths, which come in at $345,000. So just tossing in, I'm not an architect engineer here saying, can you? beef out that center one since it is less expensive and make two of them or bigger and then reduce part of the sawtooth? Yeah, we could do that. I, I think um, 
we can do anything, Christine, <laughs> uh, in terms of what, what you want to bring natural light in, but I think it's important to get, because the floor plate is so big here, um, we want to get natural light in. Um, I, and I want to, I'm going to say this, and maybe I shouldn't, is we can, we can, we can take this as either way, either it stays where it goes, but Josephine, we can carry this into DD as an alternate price. Correct? Skylights. Yeah. We can. I mean, if, if we're going about it, that the sawtooth would be one option or the base and then that the yes. combination of that would be alternate one for instance with Which multiple be, skylights yeah. no just i think all flat but we we would have to, to i think we would make this one wider i mean skylights in the end you know they they're maintenance the, these these sawtooths are less maintenance mm -hmm. um but I, I don't know. I don't know how to. It's an aesthetic thing, right? That's what it is. That's to me what it is. Aesthetic yeah. and then light filled interior. Right. And then just to remember that the more skylights we may put on the roof, the less room you have for future yeah, solar PVs, panels yeah. down the road. Mm -hmm. But if there's no sawtooth, you just could put solar on that little stretch. Yeah, on yeah, on their own frames. On their frames. Well, we're doing again what we did on three, four, and five. We're we're making you design on the fly. Yeah, right. <laughs> so can we also loop this in for you all to talk amongst yourselves, give us some thought, and figure out how you what are a couple up. of options where we could save some money. If you could relook at this and think amongst yourselves for a way that maybe one or two options to offer the building committee or the us again, um, how to save some money. Well, we gave you the the saving the most money. We just gave you. It's taking the those off. And how much is that, Craig? Half a million. Half a million. Yeah. Half a million. So, could you reduce that and save two hundred and fifty thousand? I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could. If the but that is that if that's the marching orders, we want to get rid of the sawtooth and we want to save two hundred fifty thousand rather than five hundred thousand. Uh, but I, it's a design, Christine. We we yeah. start designing this thing. I'd like to hear um, Sharon, George. What are your thoughts of hole removal? I know it's a lot, or half removal, or other options. Um, personally, I mean, I'm not in favor of losing the sawtooth roof just because a lot of people, uh, are going to mourn the loss as, as awful as it is. A lot of people are going to mourn the loss of the pyramid of the original building. And this kind of ties into it. And I think if we made that drastic of a change, I would have concerns about some people who may have pledged money for this project not liking that change. Plus the factor with the natural lighting and how that affects the sustainability of the project. So I would not be in favor of getting rid of them. Yeah, the sustainability committee has made it very clear that that shouldn't be something that's taken off our plates right now. So did MBLC okay these sawtooth or would, like I, I yeah. keep hearing that they don't like them, but they say they don't like no they don't like skylights. They horizontal. The, the, yes, horizontal. The, the, they like the sawtooth because it was it brings light into this large floor plate, and they yeah. would discourage us from doing skylights. So we have seven of them. What if we went with four? or three, or just not over the stacks, just over where people sit and read. Cause I get that it's like, I'm not gonna necessarily be in love, like need the skylight over the stacks, but where I'm sitting and enjoying my book, it is a beautiful thing to have 
the sky. But then you wouldn't see it from the street. If, if, the, if people are worried about the aesthetics of this on the outside, you I wouldn't... don't think they're worried about the out. George, are you saying that they want the outside look or the inside look? I'm saying when they walk into the library and they see all okay. the natural light. Because you can't see you can't see the atrium from the outside of the building. That's it. Is. No, but you can see the saw and the renderings. You can see the sawtooth. Right, right. No, I'm I'm talking about okay. from, from inside the library. So what if we focus them even through like over the reading areas rather than over the stacks? That would probably MBLC would probably like that too. And it looks like there's five of them there. Is there five or seven? I'm confused. So there's five on that wing, and then what you can't see from this rendering is the um, the northeast wing, and there are two large ones on that as well. Josephine, on the northeast wing, is the floor plate as deep as it is on the other wing? Is the floor plate as deep? What do you mean? As is it? Far as is the... it? From the west, the length. Yes. I don't think it's the same length. No. Okay. So, could we get uh, get by with one skylight on that northwest wing? Wing? I don't know. I, I don't know. This is this is we're going down the design tunnel so, again. Exactly. Yeah. So, can we table this and you give it some thought and maybe come up with a couple of options to bring back to us with savings? Right. What I can't do, Christine, is I can't do the design right now. So we, Craig can tell us, hey, you guys, we have to cut half of the, the sawtooths. And that's what we can give you a number for that. We have to cut that's two of the sawtooths. Okay. But we can't tell you what it will look like. And that, I just don't want it to be an all or nothing. When we look at this, mm -hmm. this value management list, you know, it's all or nothing. I'm trying to find wiggle room. Where can we save some money and, and still have what we want, mm -hmm. but just maybe not all of it. Yep, understood. Okay, so that would be that one. Want to move to number nine, Craig? Sure thing. All right, number nine uh, actually um, is a decorative metal railing in lieu of glass railing. So uh, Josephine, if you flash back to that previous image, um, where these two folks are in the, in the rendering a reading and sort of wrapping all around, that's uh, glass railing. And um, you can have a railing that it's not the exact same look, but it's um, a decorative metal railing um, for a savings of somewhere around $85,000. I don't think there's any loss. Again, we're going to be interested in seeing what it would look like. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any loss in substituting the decorative metal for the glass. I think the glass is lovely. I, I think it's a it's a wonderful thing, but I, I don't think it goes to maintain the integrity of the building in any way. I agree so, with Austin. I agree too, and also it, less glass to clean. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Children with fingerprints. <laughs> Yep, put away some of that Windex budget. Um, okay, so we're set on that one. Can we so that move one I'll to... switch over to accepted as a recommendation. Right, and move to number 10, standard operable wall in lieu of nano wall. Right, and so there are um, a couple locations within the building where um, the design team has included folding partitions that are glazed, fully glazed and Nana Walls, like the brand name. Um, this $50,000 represents swapping that out for uh, what you've probably seen in conference rooms or some classrooms, uh, standard opaque folding partition, which, you know, again, this cost estimator is just looking for places where you can save money. Um, the design team has advised that there is a function to having that glass there so that, you know, supervision is one of the big things that M the MBLC has been uh, requesting in this new design, yeah. um, sightline supervision. And so this 
uh, one of the nano walls was uh, in the teen area, I believe, or the youth uh, literature area. Um, and so for a maker a, space, you know, a desire to kind of be able, you know, for staff to be able to see through and see what's going on, even when that wall is deployed. But perhaps. So can I say, can we just get rid of them all together? Because uh, you're right, those plastic folding, they're awful. A, right. they don't stop sound. They're, they're basically pretty worthless. So why have them in at all? It so just Nana means Wall so if you go sort to of the, the higher end version, um, so they do, they are nicer than, say, what you're used to seeing. Yeah, no, I'm saying let's not have dividers at all. Ellen and Josephine, um, off the top of your heads, do you think that works sort of programmatically? Um, or I think you had mentioned maybe uh, shelving units or something else to kind of divide the space. Right, but I think the mission from MBLC is visibility. So it, it's really program-based. So we put them in because the program was wanting something mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> Wait, so um, tell me in the teen maker space. So the Woodbury room, the large meeting room, you know, we have one of those now. You don't. You just don't need a divider. You're only going to use the Woodbury room if you need a, a space that houses, you know, 150 to 200 people. So you don't need a divider. But regarding the teen maker space, explain to me where that divider is going. It's. I'll let you say, it, Josephine. Yeah, I can pull up a plan. Just to, everybody's looking at the same thing. Second. So in the young adult area, this is where we were showing that nano wall. So we were separating this out for the workroom space, assuming that- Can it just be a wall? Can it be a wall? You're going to want glass in it. We could right, have it, it as, as double doors that open on four of them. Right. We could have a fixed glazed wall with double doors. Yeah. That would be great. And then get rid of the one in the Woodbury room altogether. Okay. Did Done. I just save a million dollars? No. We wish. <laughs> Those glass doors still cost money, but yeah. I think this is the other one here. Right, Craig? There you go. I think this was the other one in the youth nonfiction. Oh, yep. yeah, you don't need that one at all. This can just be open. Yeah. Okay. Now, did I save a million dollars? We'll take it, though. We'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, is that any more with number 10? Or can we move on nope. to 11 uh, and 12? All right, 11 and 12, we touched on earlier, 11 being um, instead of the wood ceiling up at that second floor level or anywhere in the project, um, we would just do a drop ceiling, ACT acoustical ceiling tiles. So it's a, it's a different look, sure. And then 12 would be on the, on the first floor instead of the planks, long ceiling tiles, you just go to a, a two foot by two foot grid. Actually, Josephine, if you have those reflective ceiling plans um, from that set you were just looking at, I think that'll help people visualize the scope that we're talking about. And is this wood ceiling only in the big open areas? Like, what about um, staff offices and stuff? Yeah, like it's not. It's just ACT squares. Right. The so cheapest, staff offices already have those the, two by two the, squares. The back of house has the least expensive finishes, durable, but least expensive. And that's already, I'm just clarifying for anyone who's what, like that's already there. We're, you're gonna point out the areas that these ceilings were proposed. So this is the first floor. This is level one. And so this was the area that we had shown exposed just because we weren't sure of the level of CLT exposure we were going to be aiming for. But the rest of it is showing that ACT that 
the plank. Craig was just referring to. Yeah, the plank. Right. So the southeast corner has got the two by two. And that's the sort of staff area. Mm -hmm. And then, so that pattern would be everywhere on this floor. And then we're just showing some clouds right now at the um, circ desks. But with the not to cloud this discussion, but if if this all goes to CLT, if we keep CLT, you can reduce this significantly. Right. This can all be eliminated. All the main spaces. I wouldn't say all, Josephine. I think we're still going to want to hide the <laughs> actual units, um, but all the ductwork, right. all that, it's going to be exposed, right. which is just part of the look. That's awesome. Okay. To the point so, that Ellen made a while back, um, some of the smaller spaces, we might still want to just keep the, the ceiling that we were initially showing, right? Yeah. So we would In some highlighted areas, like near the circulation desk or something, you said? Right. We might want a cloud there or something mm -hmm. different. Some of the, For the noise. offices, back of house spaces. Yeah. And of course, the existing building would still have ceiling. So I think I heard Sharon positive there, but George and... Um, Austin, what are your feelings about exposing maximum CLT and seeing ductwork? I'm, I'm totally on board with that because I think A, it will save money and B, it will show the CLT that everybody wants to see. And also, I mean, there's something to be said for accessibility of ductwork and yeah. mechanicals and things <laughs> like that down the road. Um, I certainly see the value in putting it in certain places where, uh, you know, for, for acoustic value and things like that. But for the most part, I mean, I just, I just feel like it's a no brainer. So I, I kind of agree, but it, it may be only a half brainer for me. So my question actually is for Ellen and, and Josephine. One of the questions that I have is the transition as I move from the historic building into the new addition. Uh, and what thinking, uh, what, what is your thinking about the experience of moving from the old building into the new building? So the old building, of course, is nothing exposed, <laughs> nothing intentionally exposed uh, in, in ceilings. And I, uh, again, I'm not an architect. I just wanna hear what you have to say about the transition. So is it going to be just, it's kind of there, I'm, I'm in a building with a ceiling and now I'm in a building where the ductwork is exposed, or is there some, is there some kind of transition that you imagine? I don't think there's a transition, Austin, okay. to be honest. Great. That's um, we can work that through, but I think from a historic point of view, you're going to want, you know, the historic building to be what it is it always has been and then the this new piece will have the exposed utilities essentially thank thanks for the answer okay christine i'm i'm i'm, I'm good so we're good with moving uh 11 and 12 into the accepted and recommend that to the whole committee with so i think so it sounds like what everyone's comfortable with is exposing more of the CLT. Correct. And therefore, you might even reduce this, right? Get, get, get more of the savings right. because maybe well, you need to reduce some of the ceiling coverage. Right. So this is actually 1 and 2 and 11 and 12. Yes. And so then that, those remaining ceilings, if, if, people, if they're very small, then I don't think it would matter if it's plank. Uh, you know, plank tiles versus two by two. Um, right. But I don't understand, Christine, you said it, it includes one or two, one and two? One and two is the right. CLT that we're, as a group, saying we're, we're keeping. guessing the CLT, but we are encouraging you all to design it in uh, showing it off, saving some mm -hmm. money, and then we can reduce the, the ceilings. ceilings. Yes. Got it. All right, so the next one, this one, I can't even believe this is on the list. This just makes me shiver. <laughs> this is Craig's fault. It's not us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, the site, but then I'm like, what? No HVAC. <laughs> well, 
Right, no special HVAC. It would just be the, the building HVAC. So, you know, we have this listed as not plausible. You've got special collection materials. They're valuable. They're, you want to preserve them. Um, that's why the system was designed as it's designed. It is a potentially juicy uh, savings, but, you know, there is a, a significant reduction in value. Part of a library is not just people coming and reading and getting books, but it's a repository of your special collections. Um, mm -hmm. do any of the other three, do you have any strong feelings on this? Um, George? I, mean, I, I absolutely agree. And I would also add that, you know, there's a considerable amount of historic preservation funds earmarked for the special collections department. And I think changing the design of the HVAC to just be traditional would jeopardize that funding. Good point. Anybody else? Yeah, we have to reject that. Okay. So uh, Austin, you good? Yep. Yes. Okay. So we'll move that one over and we'll move to item 14, which is another big number. Yes. So um, the, and actually Josephine, while we're talking about this, would you please pull up the um, landscape drawing? Um, so in the base, cost estimate, um, you've got a mixture of stone and granite pavers, um, you know, pathways, patios, walking areas, areas, you know, basically all the hardscape is um, stone and granite pavers. There are two levels of saving. One is to go from stone and granite to brick pavers. And that would yield uh, 410,000, somewhere around $410,000 savings. Another way is instead of brick, you go to concrete. And so you, you can't, uh, 14 and 15, we can't do both. It's one or the other. Uh, brick pavers, uh, sort of in the, the hierarchy of niceness, you know, concrete is serviceable and, you know, it works. One step up is brick pavers, and another step up is granite and stone pavers. Cost estimate includes that highest level right now. Uh, you can see, I, I believe it's all the areas that are shaded gray for the most part. So maybe the darker gray, I believe, is the um, stone. Um, I think I know what George is going to say on this. Well, well, I, I have a couple of things, but I guess I also want a clarification uh, focusing on the front <laughs> entrance. Now we're going to be making that handicap accessible by adding mm -hmm. that horseshoe, so to speak. Um, do we know if we're going to preserve the existing granite sidewalk and repurposing it up there? Or are there gonna be too many changes to do that? The sidewalk? Yeah. We're not touching the sidewalk. Okay. No, the front walkway. The front that's walkway. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's being switched out. Okay. Um, in this in this plan. Okay, and honestly, I think it has been proven, but I could get a confirmation on that 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 slate front walkway is not original; that it was added at some point. Uh, so I don't think anybody could argue that we were changing something historical. Um, so I guess my follow up on that is that, you know, um, concrete is a lot easier to maintain in the winter and it doesn't move like brick does. Um, and considering we have so much of it, um, I would I would be inclined towards at the very least. Even if there was an argument, everything but the front, let it be concrete. Um, I don't know aesthetically what the front would look like done in concrete, but I just feel it's easier to maintain and it, it it's saving a lot of money. We do it all the time, George, in concrete. Yeah, I just, I just think it's saving so much money. And as someone who has had to shovel <laughs> brick sidewalks, it's an awful thing in New England. Right. <laughs> it might look in pretty, but it's awful. Agreed. Austin, Sharon? Yeah, we got to go concrete. So my, I just had one quick question. Um, is it possible to do uh, different treatments in different places? 
uh, to to do the more expensive thing at the front and then concrete elsewhere? Or does that make no sense? I'll just jump in, but we, we definitely could do different treatment. I think we would want to be strategic in how we, you know, in what we choose, but we could definitely have our landscape engineers, um, landscape architects look at that and figure out so, the best places for it. Yeah, so I just think uh, I'm, I'm happy to kind of move this into the kind of accepted category, but I'd really like to just get a sense of, um, you know, where someone might say, gee, you want to keep the more expensive, the more could, expensive. Um, could, could we do like the front entrance as an alternate in more expensive materials? Yeah, and I, we can do that. Yeah, just just to just to kind of keep that conversation al alive, because I, I do think there is some um, there's something aesthetically to having given the slate roof. I mean, I, I something I think to look at is the, the front entrance done differently. But in general, George's argument, I think, is quite persuasive. I, I, I wouldn't go to I wouldn't go to brick. I wouldn't go to brick. I mean, the college, the town invested in these brick. Beautiful brick things, which look beautiful for like four minutes. Mm. And, and then they're now, awful. Now they yeah. look like some of them are a little sunken and some of them are a little. So I, I would, I, I think it's good if we're going to go away that we not think about brick. So I would, I'd be inclined to accept the concrete and want to hear what the alternative might, might be. So I, I completely agree with that. I love concrete. Um, but I know as you add other elements, even like a brick edging, like whenever you have a mix, that's what happened with the Amherst sidewalks, the water gets in and it freezes and it breaks things up. Yeah. But I did want to ask the designers, and I don't know costs, like I have a stamped concrete walkway in front of my house. I also had it dyed. Um, I know if those are expensive options, you know, there's some really uh, nice, like, could some of it be stamped or, you know, like, especially that center walkway? Does anyone ever do that? We don't see that as much anymore. Um, and the colored concrete we've done in the past, it, the problem is the consistency of, of it. One batch is going to be one color. The other batch is going to be another color. So it's, it's a little bit tough, but it could be done. It, that adds, adds cost. It does add cost. So yeah. are there any, what are there other alternatives that aren't brick or brick concrete bituminous that's your options oh god yeah no we can do better than bituminous um so can we move this to the uh accepted austin yes yes okay, yes Okay, great because that 575 is a big number yeah um so the next one is would well, be christine i'm sorry before, yeah, before we go on but... do you want to say like 20 percent of the area will be a nicer material and so then what we could do is just apply uh, uh, an 80% factor to this. So oh, see, I'm confused. What is the nicer material then that we're considering? It would be like a stone or a granite. George, what do you think? Do you want 20% of it stone or granite? I mean, my, my suggestion was to make the front entrance an alternate. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. And That's, I, I agree with that. That makes a lot of sense. And that's like a stone. So, right. I'm trying to, so we're proposing the front walk still be a stone. The existing one will be taken out and a new one will be put in and the rest of it's concrete. Right. As an alternate. The as base, an alternate. The base alternate. is concrete. Correct. Yes. Sounds good. So um, I can plug in some numbers. Um, Ellen and Josephine, if you could. I wouldn't. I, you know what, Craig? I would take that full amount and then we'll in DD we're going to have a number an for the alternate. alternate. Yes. Great. Very good. Awesome. Great. Sorry to cut you off. I didn't oh, want no to go problem. down a rabbit yeah. hole. Yep, that makes it easy. <laughs> All right. Um, is typical CMU open trash enclosure, ILO siding and roof. Right. So in the in the current design, there it's like a little house for the for the trash and recycling area. It's got a, a roof over it. And so you can save a little bit of money 
by just doing a, a CMU, you know, three-sided, um, you know, visual screen, basically. Can you explain what CMU is to people? Oh, a uh, concrete masonry unit. Um, so this is not going to look nice. It's almost like we want to buy. What's that shed company that advertises all the time? Reed's Ferry. Reed's yes. Ferry. Why don't we get a Reed's Ferry shed for you know a yeah. few thousand bucks? Yeah. Better than the CMU. Because, but when you, and that's because I know George, your concern was that you have like lawnmowers and snow snow blowers that need to be enclosed, right? Yeah. Well. See that that that's where I'm a little confused because I was under the impression that this was strictly for trash and recycling, and my my question to that was going to be, well, how do they empty a dumpster if it's an enclosed unit? Um, but yeah, we would need something. Okay, I got that, it confused too. I apologize. Yeah, we would need something that is securable but also fireproof because if we're putting gas powered equipment in it it would have to meet whatever fire codes what have you um where does it go now in the where is it now it's in the shed which is going to be gone but is it fireproof um it's grandfathered <laughs> it's it's also grandfathered yeah it's 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 a it's a steel frame with a with um oh. brick with a brick exterior. Um, I mean, we've been moving towards electric things, but a snowball yeah, oh, yeah. is not an, not an option. Yeah, so right. because there's because there's no fireproof um, storage in the building itself, we would need something. It doesn't have to be large, uh, but we would need something. Frank, was your number assuming the whole thing? I think when we originally sized this, we did it with the with the consideration that we may have a snow plow in it, which that isn't going to be an option uh, going forward. So we might even be able to reduce the size of it. This is CMU. Yes, but it's got siding on it as well. So and and a, and a slope roof. And so um, RLB suggestion was take off the siding, take off the slope roof, and and then and then save 65,000. I think you I need, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. You could put some, I think you could maybe just slope the roof one way. Because you're going to want it currently sloped. Is. I think you're going to want it sloped. Yeah, C currently you've got a, a, a single pitch slope roof. Um, and, you know, to realize these savings, it would be um, switching to something that's open to the sky. Nothing too special, but it is kind of at the front, so you know. Right, it has to look nice. So why don't we target some savings that we'll get out of this, right? Because I think you're going to want. Um, we don't have to heat this. It doesn't have to be heated. Um, electrical. It would need electric. Needs electric, yeah. Yeah, because that's potentially where we'll also be putting the charging unit for the, the van. Um, but I think the size, I don't recall what the square footage is on that, but when we originally spec'd it out for the program, we made it big enough to handle an eight foot snow plow, which again, we're, we're not going that route anymore. So. I'm thinking the overall size of it could be reduced and maybe that's where the savings could be. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And do you have a dump, do you have a dumpster or is yeah. it, uh, yeah, okay. We have a dumpster and we have, uh, we have external uh, recycling uh, barrels. Okay. What is the ILO siding? Is that like a hardy board? No, in lieu of, in, uh, open trash enclosure in lieu of siding and roof. So, so you take off the roof, you take off the siding, and now you've got concrete masonry unit, you know, cinder block, um, and open to the sky. 
So the ILO, I, I'm unfamiliar with that. Is that pricey? I guess I was asking, is there a cheaper that's side? That's in lieu of. of. That, that's an acronym for in lieu of. Oh, thank you. No wonder why I don't know that kind of signing. In lieu of. So, but could we, is there a less expensive siding? I mean. Than uh, CMU? No. That's the cheapest. Yep. Because it has to be fireproof. And it will still look nice? No, it's going to look painted CMU. <laughs> I was trying to find a photo of one, but I think let's get off this. I think there, I think we can save some money. Maybe we save two thirds of that because we're, you know, working with George and DD, we can reduce the size. Yeah, and we I, I, will... I think we can. Which that's smart. So great. Add that to another one of the redesigning. Um, and I, maybe we, you don't need the windows in there, George. I mean, that's not a lot of money, but. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, all right, so that one we're accepting and it's going to be redone. So uh, number 17, eliminate rain garden. $78,500. Josephine, what was the story on that from um, the landscape folks? Well, the question was, um, that was thrown to them was just if it was aesthetics or not. And they confirmed that it wasn't aesthetics, but they just don't know right now how much they need um, for runoff until they get more testing and investigations done during DD. Mm -hmm. DD. That makes sense. So it might reduce on its own a little, or it's probably what it is. It's an approximate, right? Because Craig, you just based that number is just based off of what was in the documents. Well, that's the whole number, right? So we we're gonna yeah. need a we're gonna need a portion of that. We're not quite sure what yet. Right. Yeah, so the reason why we've got this one listed as not plausible, it's more like we don't know at this point. Yeah. So we, we can't it. cash in on those savings until we know more. Um, and so could that and be just possible be, and we see how it goes? Just, just to be clear, this was just brought up, I think, at the time, at one of the meetings, someone from the Sustainability Committee had commented on, can we eliminate Rain Garden because maybe they're aesthetic, but they're not aesthetic. So right. they're functioning. put this into the not, right. not plausible. They weren't putting it there for decorative reasons. I want to clarify. So can we remove the word eliminate and change to reduce Rain Garden and leave it as possible? And we'll just see as design goes down if they needed it as large as what they originally. Or we pick up that change in the design development estimate. Because by then, Christine, they'll know yeah. the size. Right. OK. Right. So I think we, we don't add any, we don't add to our savings right now. But we keep in mind that we'd like to reduce it if possible. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yes. That makes yes. sense. All right. So the next one has a funny number. Uh, these are these are the next two are add alternates. These are sort of carrying forward uh, to energy conservation uh, measures. Um, so these would be presumably add alternates, um, things that were adding to the sustainability or the the um, energy efficiency of the building. And these are old numbers, unfortunately. You know, these uh, these values, 1.3 million and 200,000, those are from a cost estimate back in October of 2020. Uh, neither cost estimator put new new prices to those. So but, um, it, just, just to remind ourselves, these things were not included in the design. This is an add-on. So my correct. suggestion is that we just leave it right where it is as, as, an, as an old, you know, kind of, Mm -hmm. alternate if money falls from the sky yes i would or, just ask one question about the alternate um does it have to be an all or nothing on triple glaze or you know yes you oh. it is because i was thinking about oh, no. areas on the north side are a lot colder than maybe on the west side I, you could mix and match christine you absolutely could it's just a big ticket item. That's all, the only reason why I asked. Oh, sure. No, un understood. Okay. So will that be considered when we consider it as an alternate? 
it's not just an all or nothing or well, I, I, we, I, go ahead, Josephine. Well, when we when we entered into SDs, um, we had that ECM list, and these two were highlighted a different color. And right. basically, the understanding was if if we had money and we right. could potentially reduce the EUI further, we would study these in DD. And okay. and so that's sort of how we ended that sustainability sustainability goals session and started SDs. And if I skipped the next one, the window overhang, could you show on a rendering so people understand what that is? Well, we don't have that in the rendering. Yeah, but the where, or explain where they, I know what they are, but like where they go and the function that they, they have a function, they're not just for looks. So um, I think originally we were envisioning, let me try and pull up the front rendering. Um, along this path here, mm -hmm. um, that we would have some type of overhang along this, you know, north-south axis. And is it a on... solid overhang, or is it like a pergola? Like, I we see them on UMass, you know, and it's, it's yeah. Could I make? Could I make a? Could I just make a suggestion? Um, and uh, uh, obviously, whatever it is you want to do, it it's about six fifteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've been at this for over two yeah. hours. Just clarifying, we do this for the public, so I just want the public to know when they're looking at line items what a window overhang is. It takes one second. I, I know you're in a rush. We're at the I am, end. I, Christine, I am not in a rush. Um, I'm feeling that, that is, you're, that you're, is, yeah. This is I, hard work and it's due diligence and we're trying to save money here and but the point is, we're talking about an item that would add money. Yes. It, it so. is, but if we're, I hear over and over again that this town is old, like really into the sustainability, and I just want them to know that this is a sustainability item. It's not an aesthetic item. It, it is, but it isn't. So what I, it does is it blocks sun yes. from coming directly into the library at certain parts of the day. That's what it does. So which would help with the cooling load. That I want public to know because it's not just a pretty overhang. So thank you. Um, so the others below it are rejected and I assume that that's just the way it is. So would be done. So uh, those were ideas that we had sort of tossed around but uh, didn't seem to have, didn't seem feasible to us, and so they weren't even brought up with the cost estimators. Great. But we included them there to show that, you know, we we, tr we looked at this from every angle possible, um, came up with some okay ideas, some good ideas, and some not so good ideas. Uh, and these ones fall into that last category. That's great. Um, and I can see the hard work and the thought, I, you know, as I think we said at the last meeting, you guys have really drilled down. I think Ken said it, you weren't here, Craig, but really, you know, dug down as hard and as creatively as possible. And that's, we really appreciate that because we're trying our best to bring the price of the building down. Yep. Um, do any of the members have any other comments on this value management list? hear anything so Craig you have your list and thank yep. you I know you all have to go back and rethink design issues and try to find some other ways we can save some money um, the next thing on our agenda was the next meeting so a week from Thursday is the next uh, JLB meeting at four o'clock on uh, September 8th um, all you powers that be uh, should we meet after or should we schedule for something two weeks out? I, I don't know. How do you think this will go, Craig, at the next building committee meeting? Um, so hopefully what we'll be doing is presenting kind of the results of this discussion and seeing if the JLBC supports it um, and if there are any particular things that they want to discuss in, in more depth. Um, and then the next big hurdle is getting to that point of, okay, we're done with schematic design. 
and we're giving the design team the okay to move forward into design development. Once we have that, then we can start setting up a, mm -hmm. um, a schedule of meetings uh, where, you know, we'll actually be talking more design stuff and less money stuff. And Craig, where does that fall in? And I, I don't want to keep us, but we have to think about the changes that um, that we got from uh, the staff and from Sharon, where that falls into this. And we don't have to take the time now. We'll talk off hand, offline, but just so the group knows, there will be some some discussion with that. It, I don't I don't think it's adding cost for you know construction, but it's certainly adding to our time. Uh, yes, and so. Um... Just today, um, you know, we had just to fill everyone in, we had a meeting, uh, sort of an offline discussion with the MBLC to really dig down to get to what they want to see having to do with the layout. We obviously have the information that Sharon's provided as far as what the staff would like to see. And so then my recommendation, we, we have another kind of offline discussion with just with Sharon and see, you know, where we have common ground between MBLC staff and try to get to something that everybody very quickly to where everybody um, can accept it. Mm -hmm. And so I would envision that conversation happening, you know, this week or, or you know, right after the holiday. Okay. So that we have that information in hand before uh, the JLBC on the 8th. Okay, sounds good. All right. So do you see something that the design subcommittee would have to do after you know that will be requested from the building committee or and we should just wait to schedule something or yeah i would say let's see how things go on the eighth uh if everything aligns the way i'm um hoping it will um we'll we'll have confirmation on these ideas uh these cost saving methods and we'll have the uh, blessing to move forward into design development um the town manager does have to provide that in writing but as part of the contract um, Feingold Alexander cannot mm -hmm. proceed until they get that um, in writing. Um, okay. And so I'm hoping that will happen on, you know, by the end of the meeting on the 8th or first thing on the 9th. And then, and then we'll set up our next meeting and, you know, our next design subcommittee meeting and, um, you know, going forward through September, October. Thank you for your guidance. Certainly. So we'll wait on that. And item five, topic not anticipated by 48 hours. I don't have anything. Um, so at this point, item six, public comment. We have only one attendee. I don't, uh, oh no, one hand up. So we have four attendees and I see one hand up, uh, Bob Pam. Um, whoever, can we hear from Mr. Pam? Do you still need us? I think you, I think you can go. It, we have Craig, so thank you so okay. much. I know you got to go do more work. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guys. See you. Thank you. Thanks, Josephine. Thank you, Ellen. Thank Take you. Take care. I hope you can all hear me. Yes, we can hear you. <clears throat> okay. Um, listening to the discussion uh, as you went through items one, two, and eight is a kind of a, a package. A um, couple of things applied occurred to me. One is that among the VE items not pursued, you have effectively accepted number two, which is to reduce the interior finishes, especially ceilings, to expose CLT and mechanical systems. So if that is what you have done, you should at least acknowledge that, I think. Um, second is that in terms of where um, you are going, you, you want to maintain all of the, the major features which have been uh, expected and anticipated as both fundraising and as um, this has been described to various people in the town. Um, it seems to me that the only item which is still part of the plan which is not specifically um, requested by anybody, but which is clearly part of the design, is the what um, uh, Ms. Anceloni describes as the white projection, which is the, the uh, windows on the north side which extend out from the building frame. Uh, if those were standard windows attached to the building frame in its normal way, would that save 
substantial money. And I don't know the answer to that, but it seems to me that that is the one thing which has never been described as being necessary to the plan, but which probably has a, a substantial uh, financial component to it. Uh, I've also described in the past why I think it's possible that smaller windows, which do not go floor to ceiling um, and which provided um, a space where people could sit in front of them without it being up against the glass might make it both cheaper, uh, more energy efficient and work better as a, a, a library space. So that is my comments on that. Um, with respect to eight, again, the uh, solar panels, um, I'm a little surprised that the solar panels are gone. Um, that was uh, not the way I had understood it. But in any case, um, if the design is working towards perhaps reducing the number of them, uh, and I think Christine has made reasonable points about what that means in terms of putting it directly above the stacks, uh, would it be possible instead of having seven of them, have three or four of them, but if they were taller, um, you could get the same amount of solar panel, you could get the same amount of light, um, but it would just have fewer openings into the roof. And that might actually be a financially responsible way of doing that. Uh, and the last part is with respect to number 17, um, just from my walking through the library a hundred million times, uh, the entrance is at the lowest point in the back. And so you need clearly to have some drainage structure, whether it is called a rain garden or whether you just need a lot more piping to, to make sure water doesn't flood the basement. Um, one way or another, that is a critical issue. So um, those are the main points that I would raise. And I thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so there are some good points there. Craig, if you could just transfer them to um, the designers, that would be great. Will do. Um, so last thing, we will adjourn. Thank you all. That was hard work. Definitely. Glad to have you back.